You guys didn't play them last year, but you know it's obviously a historic rival for the club. Do you guys think about that when you're preparing for the game? Yes, and we've talked about it. Um, it's been a rivalry around these parts for longer than all of us have been alive, I would say, and it's a, a big deal to a lot of people. We're trying to get our guys to understand that not everybody's from around here, but uh, we know about it and we're talking about it, and hopefully our guys will understand that and be ready for it. Is it more special for Jordan being a Fort Worth guy? Probably. Or has that not come up? I, well, not not specifically. You know, we haven't really asked him, but I would think, I would think deep down it probably is. Yes. What are, what are the big challenges that TCU presents? Um, you know, it's uh, we've we've been playing the last two games. We played two Ivy League teams that are very Ivy League like in that they're. A lot of guards, a lot of three-point shots, a lot of complex offense, uh, not tremendous size, a lot, of, a lot of times four guards on the floor, so what we would call an unconventional or small. And now TCU is more what you would consider traditional. We're, we're more traditional. You know, we, we play with two bigs most of the time. And so it's a little bit going back to uh, maybe what we're used to most of the time, but we're also playing more talented players. So. Uh, I think you know we're dealing with more size, more athleticism, and uh, more of the things that we're pretty much used to playing against most of the time in the conference. Is it tough to come off a quick three-day rest when they've had a week to prepare for this game? You know, I wonder who really has an advantage on that. On one hand, you have a week to prepare, which is great, and you can rest during that time if that's what you choose to do. Um, which can be really good, but at the same time, sometimes a little rest can take place or not. And then ourselves, on the other hand, no time to rest, but we're in a game rhythm. And so I don't know if you, if you ask me to choose. Honestly, I don't know which would be to our benefit. So truth be told, once they throw the ball up, it, it really probably doesn't matter. It's just things coaches worry about. <laughs> With uh, two starters down on Sunday, Keith really stepped up and did a lot of scoring for you guys. What's the difference between him this year and a year ago? Well, he's, uh, he's had a lot of experience now, that's one. But he is uh, playing with a lot of confidence, and, he, and part of that is because he's worked really hard to just, uh, confidence comes with doing well, and he's practiced very well, he's playing very hard, and, he's, and his mindset is to play to win. He's, he's really taken the defensive end very seriously, and so even when you would say he didn't shoot the ball well, he's still playing very well. And I know deep down he got confidence from that, and he knew it would be a short amount of time before he had a really good shooting night. Obviously, he's capable of that. That's the last thing to worry about. But what we're thrilled about is that he's just playing winning basketball. I mean, he's a guy, used to be a guy, if he wasn't shooting well, and you might think, well, what can he give you right now? We don't care if he's shooting well or not, as far as that goes, because he's guarding so well, he's rebounding hard, he's, he's uh, in the right place, he's got an understanding. And I've said it before, he studies the game probably harder than anyone on our team. He probably watches the most film. And, and you've got to really respect that. Is that pride and effort on the defensive end something he's that's been in there all the time, yes. or have you really yes. had to sort of no. teach it? No, uh, he, he has always had that, and he's naturally very competitive. Uh, he, you know, you get a contest, and he wants to win. It's a he's very naturally competitive, and so because of that, he doesn't want to see his guy score. You know, I mean, that's just that's just his nature, and. We love those kind of guys, and so you know those guys are going to get better. You know they're going to get really good. You know they're going to get great one day because the fire is burning, and uh, we feel that from him. But no, we didn't teach him that. Hopefully, we've taught him, you know, maybe some fundamentals of the defense and some recognition. But but he had the burn to really compete. He wants their best player. He wants to take those challenges. And just love guys like that. How's Nick Moore feeling? Uh, better. I don't know about great is the right word, but he is headed in the right direction. So, so we'll see. But hopefully, hopefully he'll be okay. Is he the only guy with any injury concerns? Yes, other than Benny Malagu. <laughs> yeah, but yes, yes. When you look to preparing for TCU tomorrow, what are some areas that you'd like to sharpen in the game? 
gosh, I'd have to give the scouting report of what we got to do. And I, I don't want to do that, but I can promise you there's some areas that we need to sharpen. We know it. Talking about it is one thing, practicing is another. And you know, now the games are coming on pretty quickly, so you got to be a little mindful of not overworking, but also addressing some things. So I will say there are definitely some things that we need to shore up. And I'd rather not say because I don't want, you know, maybe they haven't noticed. So hopefully they haven't, and uh, we can hide them at least for another game. As far as what they've noticed, with you coming off back-to-back -back games against these Ivy League teams, does that give you something of an advantage since the most recent film TCU would have would be against these unconventional systems you talked about? Oh, I don't know. You know, their last game they played a team that pressed them the whole game and zoned them a good amount and probably kind of kind of muddied up that game from what you would the natural flow that they would have. So, you know, we're watching that film. I don't I don't really know if that would or not. Um, We've both played enough games that we get a sense for each other. And we know pretty much what they're going to do. They know pretty much what we're going to do. So I, I don't know if that's the case. Uh, a lot of times, film, we've been talking about this as a staff. You know, you watch a lot of the films, a lot of games of the other team. But until you get in person, a lot of times it looks a lot different. And then the matchups take place because you can't see it. You know, the film guy, he's taking it from up here and everybody looks like they're two inches and, and, and a half, you know, everybody's tiny and you can't tell. Athleticism sometimes is hard to see on film. And you get in the game and uh, a lot of times there's a lot of talk early in the game about, hey, this didn't look that way or he's a lot better than we thought or he's a lot bigger, stronger, whatever. So um, sometimes it takes a couple minutes in the game to kind of sort some of the things that you saw on the film.